Hey guys, what's up? My name is Anthony. Welcome to another edition of BNA Sports Talk. And it's got like a little bit of like a voice inflection there. I realized I was kind of low energy in the beginning. It's like I don't really know how to start. But anyway, what I want to talk about today, or one of the things I want to talk about, is showing affection. Now, a lot of people have different ways of showing affection. Some people hug. You know, I'm not really a hugger. Like, don't touch me. I'm. It's kind of weird because I feel like I'm kind of insecure about how I smell. So I'm like, people are going to think I smell, but I really don't. But anyway, I've never been really much of a hugger. Other people give people gifts, like, just randomly. Like, one of those guys who just doesn't give his girlfriend flowers um, on, just on Valentine's Day. He just kind of surprises them. Or you can just, like, just call them every once in a while, just e- explain how much you love them, and just, just random acts of kindness. Other people don't really say anything, and it was kind of just understood, but a lot of people have different ways of showing affection. So with the Clippers and the Raptors, both teams are really trying to get Kawhi Leonard. With the Raptors, they're like, oh, we'll give you this for free, we'll let you eat for free, we'll give you free massages, we'll do this, we'll do that. Ka- I don't think Kawhi Leonard would like all of that. I don't think... He, he likes that type of affection. I'm not sure if he's that type of guy. He's the type of guy who, in the city, he, if he can just be quiet and just grind and win, he enjoys doing that. There's some people that don't enjoy all these things that other people enjoy. I know for me, my dad goes, you know what, Anthony, just enjoy a soda every once in a while. And I used to enjoy, really enjoy a soda. I used to be the guy who was like, every once in a while, I, you know, I would have a soda, and then for the next couple of days, I just all I drink was like soda. And then then I'll be like, yeah, I'm not drinking soda for like the next four or five months. You know, every once in a while, ice cream is good for you. Every once in a while, you know, just enjoy yourself. But some people don't enjoy doing those things and don't judge them for that. The the Raptors think Kawhi Leonard is going to get all this free stuff. We're going to do this. We're going to make you the king of the city. He's not really too crazy for that. He signed with New Balance for shoes. If he really wanted to be, you know, uh, with the crowd and kind of with everyone else, he would have joined Nike or Under Armour. But no, he, he joined New Balance for a reason. He wants to be alone. He wants to stand out. He kind of wants you to be quiet in his corner, do what he likes to do. And he's different from everyone else. Just think about it. If he signs with the Raptors, he gets four, four or five years for $190 million. You think he really cares about eating food for free, having a free place to stay? I mean, he's going to be set up for generations and generations. You kind of just, I would just leave him alone and just let him make his own decision. I know you'd feel guilty for not doing anything for Kawhi Leonard and kind of just leaving him to make his own decision because you feel like you didn't do enough, but you did all you could. And and now the decision has to be made. And uh, with a lot of the owners, they they don't really understand Kawhi Leonard. Nobody does. I don't think Kawhi Leonard even understands himself. And if I were the Clippers, it's going to be hard because with the the Kawhi Leonard and the Raptors, he already knows what it's going to be like. The Clippers is the unknown. The Clippers have to prove that they can do it. They have to prove that they're the city. So they're the ones that are going to have to make a lot of noise. Kawhi Leonard already knows what the Raptors have done for him and what he did for the Raptors, but in the end, it's his decision only. Is he going to leave $50 million on the table? I don't know, but I want to shift to this. R.J. Barrett. R.J. Barrett was a third overall draft pick for the New York Knicks just a week ago, and he, he loves New York already. And this, this is a sign that the Knicks are trying to go into a different direction. Before you had Kristaps Porzingis, when he first got drafted, everyone was booing him. And that was already a bad start for Kristaps' career, and he never really felt welcome there. Kristaps Porzingis always felt like, you know, uh, I have to prove to these fans that you know, they love me, and I need to prove to these fans that I'm a good player. But R.J. Barrett, we love him right now. We, like, we, we know that he is the player of our future, and we want to keep him. You saw what happened with Anthony Davis. We saw what happened... With uh, Kevin Durant, he wanted out of, thun- of the Thunder. We saw with a bunch of players. We're trying to build a culture on RJ so he attracts players. Kind of like Bradley Beal. He's the one trying to attract players for the Wizards. He can easily just like join the next year, say he wants out, and get traded for some players to a more affordable situation. But Bradley Beal really loves the Wizards. And I think the Knicks are trying to make RJ really love the Knicks. So he's going to start recruiting people for the Knicks. It's not going to be us bringing in free agents anymore just by the the lore of our city. We're going to actually have a homegrown talent. That's something we haven't had for a while. We had Kristaps Porzingis. We just got rid of his, uh, uh, got rid of him. I was going to say his contract, but we weren't really paying him much. And he he was rumored to push people away from the city. The rumors like, oh, don't come here because I'm leaving anyway and I don't really love this city. And that that was something really bad for the Knicks for the past couple years. Now you're going to have some homegrown talent, kind of youth development to attract free agents. Plus, Kevin Durant, here's the major sign of this. 
Kevin Durant's thinking of going to Brooklyn before the New York Knicks because the Nets seem more organized. They seem better run and better coached. You know, Kevin Durant, he's going to have to make a decision here. Is he going to join Kyrie Irving and join the Nets? And the only thing pulling him to the Knicks is right now is, oh, I got to play in MSG. That's the only thing that has ever drawn anybody to the New York Knicks. And even with that, that's a strong draw. But imagine like, oh, yeah, we're playing this kid phenom, R.J. Barrett, the highest draft pick we've had since like 1999 or whatever year it was. Well, 1999, then we go to the playoffs, but I don't know. It's been a while since we've been in this situation where we're picking top three. We had some top four, some top five, six, seven, you know, around there. But now we have a star. We believe in him. He wanted to be there. We want to have him, and it's mutual. And that's, that's just my opinion about it. That's what the Knicks are doing. And, yeah, I think they're doing the right way of trying to get a star. You have to have mutual respect. If you're trying to bring somebody something, giving them free stuff and doing all these things, it's kind of like having a girlfriend. If you ever have a really hot girlfriend, it's kind of like one of the shows where a guy gives him flower, her flowers and chocolate all the time and reminds you how much you love it. That's not a strong relationship if you have to give her all material things. You know, that, that's, that's a, a bad relationship to begin with. It has to start with mutual respect and mutual love and, and then it goes from there. Next, I want to mention this because I think it's really important. When we talk about NFL contracts and different things like that, people think about it the, the completely wrong way. First of all, they think about it on scale. You know what? He had 100 receptions for 1,000 yards. That means he's worth X dollars. And then one player is like, well, I had 85 receptions and 850 yards. So that means I'm worth a little bit less than him. No, 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 no. You don't compare yourself to another player at the same position. You compare yourself to what you're worth to your team. People are thinking about this the completely wrong way. So when you think about Dak Prescott and you think about Carson Wentz, people are saying, you know what? You know, Carson Wentz, Dak Prescott, uh, Carson Wentz has this amount of wins, he has this amount of yards, he has this amount of interceptions, this amount of yards per attempt, and this QBR, and Dak Prescott has this. So they're worth about the same. But do you all know how much uh, worth Dak Prescott is to the Cowboys? How replaceable are you? If, If the... If Carson Wentz or a different quarterback was on the Cowboys, how much would they he be worth to the Cowboys? I would say much more. Dak Prescott is not worth that much to the Cowboys. You put anybody in there, I think they're just as successful. And I think Dallas should kind of flex their muscle and say, you know what, you're not really that worth that much to our team. And then prove it. Have a backup. You know, we, we think a lot of times with stats compared to other players, you know what, he did, he's not as accomplished as this person, so he doesn't deserve as many things. No, it's about how much you're worth to the team. There's a pie that has to be allocated. There's 100% of the pie. How much are you worth to the team's success? 20%, 10%, 5%? You know, the team should think about individually. They shouldn't be pressured to think outside of what other teams are giving different players. They shouldn't be thinking along these lines, and this is what makes losing teams. For the Giants, Odell didn't mean that much for the Giants at a certain point. We're losing with them, losing without them. So then you start comparing his stats to Antonio Brown's stats. It's like, oh, yeah, he deserves to be paid more than this guy. He deserves to be paid more than Julio Jones, A.J. Green, because he's putting up all these stats. No, it's about how much you're worth to your own team. And if you can't meet in the middle, you can say goodbye. And I know you may be thinking, well, then you just get rid of everybody, right? But no, you have to find your priorities. You, sometimes you have to take the loss. But eventually, you can't start taking so many contracts because then that hurts your own team. You have to find the even balance between paying guys and making them successful. Give good locker room guys some money. You know, you have to you have to figure things out. Maybe a guy with who give him like one or two million more than what he really deserves, and he'll be happy, and he'll work out for the team. And then there's some veterans that are really worth more than what you're paying them, and those are the deals that you really like. The Tom Brady's, the the guys that are descending that need a one year prove it deal. The Nadamik and Sue's out there. That's where you find your other value. You find your value in the stars who are just really good and you just pay them no matter what and they're just going to be really good and sometimes you just cause and charge the premium and you just pay for the premium and then there are other players that are kind of like you know what you're you're descending and you don't really have a lot of leverage let's just give you this and they'll be more than happy they'll be more than happy just to get a couple bucks because they they love the game of football and they'll be a good locker room guy so um that's my opinion about nfl contracts And yeah, definitely let me know what you guys think about that. Let's move on to what I really want to talk about next because it's this. So a lot of people are comparing the Kevin Durant going to the Knicks 
as LeBron returning back home to Cleveland, first of all, home isn't New York for Kevin Durant. For that, that's the first off thing. But people are saying, you know what? Kevin Durant needs to prove that he can do it without superstars. He needs to prove to himself and to everyone else that he can bring a championship that to a city that hasn't won for years and years and years and years and years and years. Sorry, I'm a Knicks fan. It's kind of been annoying at this point. Like, I'm kind of like, yeah, I don't want us to succeed. I kind of want one of my favorite teams to be a laughing stock. But eventually, you know, the Giants haven't won in years. The Yankees haven't won in years. The Rangers, I've never seen them win, win a cup. So I'm like, I'm starting to get a little sick of it. But anyway, so I think this trade or this move would be more similar to LeBron going to the Lakers. And here's why. So LeBron... He uh, he proved that he can do it with a bunch of superstars. When he was with Cleveland, he had Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving. He assembled a team, uh, like a super team. He had a lot of players. And at, towards the end, it was like a ragtag team. But Kevin Durant's going to go to a ragtag team too uh, when he goes to the Lakers. Sorry, the Knicks. He's not going to go. Kevin Durant is not going to go to a super team when he joins the Knicks. Kind of like LeBron was going to when he joined the Lakers. You know, he might have a little bit of an off year. People said LeBron should have taken an off year last year to assess the situation. If Kevin Durant goes to the Knicks this year, it would be to assess the situation, see how things are different. And yeah, so this Knicks thing, it, it's going to a different conference, kind of like LeBron did when he joined the the, uh, the West. You know, the, the East was getting a little bit stronger. The West is, for Kevin Durant, I guess it's getting a little bit weak. The East is not as strong as it was, so you kind of just buy low, sell high type thing. You know, you go to a team that's not as successful, and you try to make the best out of it. The first year is going to be a wash, because he's not playing, and then you go from there. Historically, um, Lakers have had a good, uh, you know, good first class, good upper division of leadership and things like that, but now they're chaotic. Kind of same thing with the Knicks. They were chaotic, moving towards a little bit of a better future, but I still think that the Knicks are a disgruntled franchise, and that's what I'm comparing it to. Kevin Durant's going to go to the Lakers, or the Knicks in, that, in this case. It's not LeBron returning back home. Home isn't New York for Kevin Durant. Home is Washington, D.C., and Washington, D.C. is an even bigger mess, so I wouldn't even go back there.